All right, welcome back to Mega Man and Base. So, this stage select looks a bit different from the usual Mega Man stage select, doesn't it? We only have three Robot Masters to start with, but there are a whole lot more over there. So, uh, let's fight one and see how this selection screen works, why don't we? So first up is Cold Man. I'm surprised there hasn't been a Cold Man yet, but well, now we're getting him out of the way. Ooh, very good background at the start. I feel like Snowy City eventually becomes pretty common. In fact, that was one of the backgrounds in Mega Man 8, but you know what? This also looks pretty good. This is a nice background. Anyway, though, Cold Man stage. Well, first off, pretty good song. Uh, I don't know, I don't have much to say about it, but like, it feels simultaneously cool, but also kind of peaceful. It's weird. I don't know quite how to describe it, but the ending bit's real good. We also have a few introductions to make. So first introduction, Bass's weakness is that he cannot slide, which means he can't go through passageways like that. Our second introduction is that disc. These are data discs. We'll see what these do at the end. Um, this is not a 100% playthrough, though. Uh, I will not be getting all of the discs. That would involve backtracking, and I don't feel like backtracking in this game. And also, it's actually impossible to 100% the uh, database CDs with only one character, and I'm not gonna lie, I really don't want to play as Mega Man. <laughs> Look, this is Bass's time to shine, and I don't think he cares about discs. Doesn't care about top secret discs at all. Now we've also got these uh, ice platforms, which you don't need to stand on for their entirety to break. Once you step on them, the process begins. So, this right here is why Bass cannot get all the CDs. It's because he can't slide, and some of them do require sliding. Of course, Mega Man can't access a few of Bass's CDs just because uh, he doesn't have mobility either. He can't dash or double jump. We've also got a boss here, which is kind of tricky for base. If only because, like, I don't know, maybe it's just me, but I really couldn't get a sweet spot like I did for uh, <laughs> the first boss, where I just stood in a spot and just killed him. Uh, first off, I don't think that's possible here. You gotta move around a little bit. But second off, if there is a spot you can stand and just keep firing at him in, uh, it's risky because he does that, the little, uh, sucking in snow attack. Naturally, that will also draw a base in, and if you get hit, you get hit. It's simple as that. We've also got a water gimmick. There's spikes down there for the most part, so be careful with the breakable platforms, or, well, you're going to die. It's actually a surprisingly tricky platforming section. Thankfully, again, base can double jump. I feel like I don't need to remind you, but I just want to keep saying it because it's really good. Double jumping's rad, y'all. I'm sorry, it, it's so good. Bass is so fun to play because of it. He's just weird. Weirdly enough, he doesn't excel like uh, at bosses. You'd think Bass would be better at violence. Uh, also, I passed it back there, but yeah, the, the last ending bit of the song I wanted to mention, like, it's so short, and it feels unique from the rest of the song. I, I kind of want that to just be a song on its own, but like, whatever. <laughs> it's just my favorite bit of the song. I kind of wish it was longer. Uh, we've also got some uh, reused stuff from Mega Man 8 here. These uh, obstacles should be familiar from uh, Frostman stage in that game. I should the penguins now that I think about it. They were also in Mega Man 8, I believe. And here we are in the boss room. Can I just say I really like the progression of Cold Man's stage? We started kind of in a city, and then we moved into a factory, and now we're kind of outside of the factory. I don't know, the, the battle background here looks pretty rad. Cold Man, however, is going to be a very good example of why Mega Man is, again, weirdly better at violence than base. So, I've not done much damage, because... All I can do is the uh, rapid shot, Bass's Buster, cannot charge, and because of that, uh, this is actually a slow battle because Cold Man has iframes, unlike just about everything else. So, a charge shot would really help here. 
That being said, I did manage to get him into a loop right here. He was a little bit tricky before. He had some uh, attacks that were kind of bad. I don't like the one where he just makes like a cold burst below you. Uh, that one is a little tricky to dodge. I wouldn't say it comes out of nowhere, but it's not the easiest thing to dodge. But right here, uh, this was a bit of a process to have to uh, get used to. This is just one of those situations where like, I had him in a loop, I wanted to keep him in a loop, it's just, it's kind of easy to mess this up. The uh, cold man really wants you to multitask, so he's gonna push a block and then he's gonna send out a cloud. Of course, I really should have been doing the uh, multi-directional targeting uh, instead of just jumping to shoot the clouds, but like, I don't know, I was just trying to be always prepared for the ice wall or really anything else he might have wanted to do. I feel like when I was actually fighting him, and did not know that he would do this for the rest of the fight, uh, I might have just assumed like, okay, he's probably gonna do a different attack soon, right? No though, he didn't. He's got 2 HP though, and again, surprisingly difficult to get rid of that, because those iframes take forever to be gone, and the ice wall will protect him. It'll do that. It's actually helpful and not just a negligible attack. It's defense too. And we also get base's extremely good animation for getting weapons. It is so extra. God, base, you're just so edgy. Whoa, look at that powerful aura, and now he's blue. And so, we get... Ice Wall. Better yet, we also get an example of Ice Wall. Pretty unique weapon. Seems like it'll be pretty useful. We'll have to check that out next time, though. For the time being, we're going to check out some of the uh, menu stuff at the bottom. Though, notice, once you defeat Cold Man, two more stages open up from uh, Cold Man stage. But for now, let's check out Auto Shop. <gasps> I've prepared some power-up parts just for you, base! Please, don't kill me! <laughs> you scare me a lot! Alright, so, this is the bolt shop. Uh, I've got 80 bolts right now, which isn't really enough for anything useful. Uh, of course, there's an extra life. Energy balancer will refill uh, weapon energy for weapons you're not actively using, if you don't really have any uh, to fill the current weapon with. Exit parts let you leave. Shot guards are protection against one instant death. Transceiver is actually one I have to explain. I don't buy this weirdly enough um but it's actually kind of cool because when you get it uh he said you call roll with it uh roll will actually give you information on the robot masters which is really neat but there's actually a lot of good parts later on in the game that i want to get so unfortunately i did not prioritize that one so here's the database. If you've been wondering where I've been getting all the Robot Master facts from, this is actually where you get them. The database will give you various information about not just the characters in this game, but throughout the entire series, and Dr. Light is very concerned about finding them. <laughs> Don't know why he's asking Base. Base doesn't seem like he cares. But uh, yeah, that'll be it for this episode of Mega Man and Base. Next time I'll actually have a cold open for you.